Welcome to another Khan Academy tutorial, geometry students, trigonometry students. We're doing right triangle trigonometry word problems. This is my first time seeing it. So we're gonna get a first hand look, first sneak peek at what this Khan Academy is all about. Bugs Bunny, throwback here, was 33 meters below ground, digging his way towards Pismo Beach. When he realized he wanted to be above ground, he turned and dug through the dirt diagonally for 80 meters until he was above ground. What is the angle of elevation in degrees of Bugs Bunny's climb? Round your answer the nearest tenth. Very relevant problem we have going on here, but if you're doing a dig project like Tesla's doing out in California, this might be relevant. Okay, so first off, we see that we have a triangle drawn here. We can kind of see the makings of that triangle. So I'm gonna draw another one outside just so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. Here's our triangle. We're given some piece of information about this. We're given that it's 33 meters on this side. We're given that it's 80 meters right here. Okay, now if it's directly straight down when you're talking about elevation, we have to assume that's 90 degrees. So that's additional information. And then we're asked to find this angle of elevation right there. We're gonna call it theta for now. Theta is just the unknown angle. That's the Greek symbol. Okay, so what do we need to know here? Well, first off, we have a right triangle. And we want to know that angle of elevation, so we have to use some pieces of trigonometry, some parts of trigonometry to figure this out. What I always do is anytime you have your angle, this is known as our reference angle. Reference angle. And once you have that reference angle, you need to label your right triangle in regards to that reference angle. What do I mean by that? Well, your hypotenuse is always going to be the side opposite 90 degrees, no matter where your reference angle is. But... When we're talking about the opposite side, the opposite side is going to be opposite your reference angle, okay? And the adjacent side is going to be this side next to your reference angle. That changes if your reference angle is over here. If it's over here, then your opposite side is over here because it's opposite and your adjacent side becomes over here. That's not the case in this problem. That's not where the reference angle is. I just wanted to tell you, you have to be mindful where your reference angle is and then label your triangle appropriately. Now. Why is it important to have a reference angle? Because our sine, our cosine, and our tangent all rely, whoops, sorry, mess up the tangent, all rely on uh, the labels of those sides. Now, why did I label it so Katoa? Because I'm telling you that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. This is the one time I'm gonna write this, and then I'm just gonna assume that you guys know it. Adjacent over hypotenuse for cosine, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. So those are our three trig identities that we need to know. And then obviously I've labeled my opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse already. Okay, so step one, reference angle. Step two, label. We're done with two steps already. Three, determine trig ratio. Now, this is a tough step for a lot of students, but I think you guys are going to get it. Okay, so once we have a reference angle, we're going to decide which of the three sides are important to us. So if we look here, we have the opposite side given, okay, that's a given information, and then the hypotenuse is given. The adjacent side we don't know anything about, nor do we care about the adjacent side, so we are only concerned with the opposite and a hypotenuse. Now, which trick identity has the opposite and hypotenuse as uh, given measurements? That's the sign. The sign is the 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 ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're gonna use the sine. We're gonna set up our ratio with sine. Over here on the left, sine of our missing angle theta. No, I'm gonna write this first. Sine of any angle theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the sine of our missing angle theta, also called theta, is going to be equal to our opposite side, 33, over our hypotenuse, which is 80. We're almost done. So this is this is the part where we can use regular trigonometry. And what I recommend, oh, I'll talk about that when we get there. But you can use regular trigonometry at this point if you have the angle and you have a missing side. But we have a missing angle, so what do we do? Well, we need to undo, if we're trying to get this, this uh, theta measurement by itself, that variable essentially by itself, right now it's being signed. It's the sign of that angle. So we have to undo that sign. How do you undo a sign? Well, we do the inverse sign of both sides. That will undo the sign and get the variable by itself. So once we do the inverse sign of sine of theta, 
It undoes the sine, and we're left with just theta. That's the whole goal. On the right side, we are going to have the sine, inverse sine, sorry, of 33 over 80. So now, this is the part that we have uh, almost completed, and we can just go to our calculator. So theta is by itself because we use the inverse sine of both sides. It got rid of the sine, leaving us just our missing angle, theta, if you guys remember. And then we just have this ratio of 33 over 80. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure uh, I am in degree mode. Okay, it says degrees, so make sure you go to mode and don't pick radians. Pick degrees. Okay, so make sure you pick degrees. And we're just going to type this in as you see it. Now, it depends on your calculator. Some calculators are a little bit different. But mine, I type in inverse sine, which is going to be second. And then sine. Don't call it sin. Second sine. And then I just type in 33 divided by 80. And I get 24.36. And it says to the nearest tenth. So I'm going to round up to 24.4 degrees and that is my angle of elevation so 24.4 and check it all right next question by the way that was inverse trigonometry because we were trying to find an angle and not a side now we're on to the next problem alexa's friend got her a skydiving lesson for her birthday her helicopter took off from the skydiving center ascending an angle of 20 degrees and traveled a distance of 3.4 kilometers before she fell in a straight line perpendicular to the ground how far from, let's just hope she had her parachute, it says she fell, then say she jumped out. How far from the skydiving center did Alexa land? Okay, this one is gonna be a little bit more detailed. So first off, notice how we have our angle this time. That's good, okay? We have this triangle that we can draw here, and because it's falling, we gotta assume that's 90 degree angle, okay? And what do we wanna know? We wanna know how far from the skydiving center. So this is the skydiving center, we want to know this distance right here. So this is half the battle is finding what is it asking us to find. It wants us to find that distance x. Now how far she fell, okay? Which we could also find, but that's not what we're looking for. Step one is going to be the same step as we did with inverse trigonometry. We want to find our reference angle. And there we have it, 20 degrees. Number two, we're gonna label the triangle based on that reference angle. So this is gonna be our opposite side. Hypotenuse is always the same. It's always opposite, the 90 degree angle. And this is our adjacent side. I should write it somewhere else. All right here, this is our adjacent side. Okay, three, this is the hard one. Determine trig ratio. Okay, so we have our hypotenuse labeled. Okay, we have that side. We don't care about the opposite side. We don't want to know how far she fell, but we do want to know about our adjacent side. We do know, want to know about X. So we need our adjacent, something with the adjacent and our hypotenuse. Well, guess what? That is cosine. Cosine is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. This time we know what theta is. It's cosine of 20 degrees. And that is equal to our adjacent side, X over... 3.4. So this is regular trigonometry. When you're trying to find sides, that is trig. When you're trying to find angles, like the previous problem, that is inverse trig. So obviously with inverse trig, you're going to be using the inverse functions. This one we're not going to. Now, here's my recommendation when we're using trig, is always put your trig ratio over 1 and then cross multiply to solve for x. This helps if you approach problems this way because if x is in the denominator, it's gonna make it a lot easier. So if we multiply here, we get x times one, which is x. I'll put times one just so you see what I did. And then we have uh, 3.4 times cosine of 20. And this is what I go, I go straight to the calculator from here. I don't worry about typing in cosine of 20 and then writing it out. I just go straight to the calculator, cosine 20, and then I multiply that by 3.4. And I get, when I do that, well, x times one is x, done with that side. And on the right, I'm gonna get 3.19, and I'm rounding it to the nearest hundredth, so I need another digit. 194, 3.194, so I'm gonna keep it the same at 3.19 meters, kilometers. And we're done, okay. Next problem, whew, this is a cool flag actually. This is actually my 
favorite country's flag. So that's pretty cool. Isabella is trying is making a huge flag of her country, the Republic of Seychelles, on a canvas 20 by 10. To do that, she has drawn she has to draw a diagonal that begins at the bottom left and ends on the right side at a height of seven meters. Okay. Since the ends of the diagonal are too far to put a ruler between them, Isabel wanted to find the angle of diagonal and draw draw it using a protractor. What is the angle of elevation degrees of the diagonal? Okay, so this is actually a good relevant problem here, something that might actually happen. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna be able to draw a triangle on this so you can see. Um, let's use purple since it's not in the, the flag color. So here we have our triangle and we have some information about it. Okay, it tells us 20 is the length there, seven is the length there, and we're trying to find our angle of elevation. That's actually smart that she's gonna do it this way. So we have seven and 20. I'm gonna redraw this triangle up here so you can see it more clearly. Since it's a flag, this is 90 degrees. This is our theta, our unknown, and then we have 20 and seven. Step one, reference angle, check, here it is. Step two, label the sides, opposite. We don't care about the hypotenuse in this case because that's not a measurement that we're looking for. Uh, and then we have adjacent here. Adjacent is always next to the angle. Opposite is always on the other side, okay? So now what is, our, what is the trig ratio we're gonna use? Opposite over adjacent, that is tangent. So we want to find the tangent of our missing angle theta and we know that it's equal to opposite over adjacent seven over 20. Now, how do we get that tangent by itself? Didn't have, write enough room here. I have to take the inverse tangent of both sides, tangent there, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I take the inverse tangent of both sides, and when you take the inverse tangent of a tangent theta, what we're gonna be left with is just theta on the left, which is what we wanted, and then we have the inverse tangent, I'm gonna write it in red, I suppose, inverse tangent of seven over 20. We, this is where we go straight to the calculator, inverse tangent, seven over 20, and we get theta equals 19.29. Round your answer to the nearest 10th, we're gonna round this up, 19.3. And that is our angle of elevation in degrees, 19.3 degrees. 19.3 degrees, check it. All right, last problem. Ooh, a river problem, awesome. Uh, gives us a lot of information again. Uh, should I read through it? Here, pause it if you guys wanna read through it. I'm gonna jump to the bottom and look at the diagram. Sometimes it's a good way to save some time. So pause. Okay, I'm continuing. So I'm looking here at the picture and it says, what is the width of the river? I'm guessing the river is flowing like this, like this. So we wanna know this missing value right here. We'll call it W just because that's cooler than X. We're gonna use W. Okay, so W is gonna be the width of the river. Let's redraw our triangle. We're gonna assume 90 degrees here. Here's our 40 degree angle and, and this is 10. Now we're trying to find W. You can uh, hopefully figure out that we're gonna be using trig and not inverse trig because we already have the angle. We're trying to find a side. Now let's go ahead and label. We have a reference angle. Here's our opposite side. Here's our adjacent side. Okay, and we know that we're gonna be using tangent because that is opposite over adjacent. So the tangent of 40 degrees is gonna be equal to our opposite side, W over 10. Now what I like to do, I like to put it over one and then cross multiply. So I have tangent of 40 times 10 equals W. So I just go straight to my calculator, tangent 40 times 10, and I get 8.39 meters, I think it's meters, yep, equals W, and I'm gonna round to the nearest hundredth, and that's already rounded, because my answer was 8.390, 8.39, it's gonna be my answer, 8.39, check it. And that's all there is to it. Trigonometry is not that bad, you're gonna be having success like like that sound right there. Hope you enjoyed this video. Come back for more. Leave a comment if you want something covered. And thank you so much for watching. Take care.